It's that time of year. Pumpkin patches, football, and cool temperatures. And in today's video, we're making mosaic fall leaves. We'll cover handmade substrates with stained glass in gorgeous fall colors. But these leaves can be covered in other mosaic tesserae as well, which we'll discuss. If you're looking for a quick, fun project to brighten your fall tablescape, this just might be the one. Let's get to it. Welcome back, and if you're new here, my name is Julie. And on this channel, we talk about tips, tricks, tools, adhesives, materials, and specific mosaic projects, all to shorten your learning curve when it comes to creating mosaic art. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, please consider subscribing. Fall leaves for some of us are kind of a state of mind. Now I live in Miami, so the thought of seeing fall leaves is actually kind of funny, although it did snow in Miami when I was in kindergarten. So you just never know. But realistically, we don't get fall leaves here, but there's no reason we can't enjoy fall leaves in our fall decor. As I mentioned in the intro, today's project is a quick one once you create the substrates, and we'll talk a little more about that in a minute. The tiling for these leaves went rather quickly. In fact, it took me just over a few hours to tile all seven, and I utilized scrap stained glass for the tesserae. So they're quick, easy, and cost practically nothing to create, and this is especially helpful if you want to make a bunch of them. Now I'll be using them as decor on my coffee table, but I could easily see them as place card holders for more formal occasions during the season. All you need to do when tiling is create an opening in your tesserae pattern. And if you were to use a thick tesserae, like let's say smalty, ceramic, or even terracotta for example, it would help the place cards stand up even better. So in today's video, I'll talk about how I created the substrates, and I'll also show you how I tiled and grouted the substrates, which will make it easier for you. We've got a lot to cover, so let's get started. Let's talk about the substrates and tesserae for this project. First off are the handmade substrates. I made them from leftover thin set mortar, which is a cement-based adhesive. They're white because I used white thin set mortar. I've also used leftover grout and cement to make substrates like these. I did a whole video here on my channel all about how to create substrates from your leftover thin set grout and cement, and I'll include a link down below in the description so you can check it out once you're done watching this video. It is a fun one. Once your substrates are dry, there's no prep work involved, so they're ready to go. And for the tesserae, as I mentioned a little earlier, I used scrap stained glass on these substrates. So I went dumpster diving, so to speak, in my small cutoffs and pulled together tesserae in fall colors, focusing on red, orange, yellow, and dark green. I also used some scrap brown glass for the veining of the leaves. I want you to have fun with the tesserae. You can use other materials besides stained glass. You could create mixed media fall leaves and incorporate a variety of materials. It's up to you. I just stuck with stained glass because I had a lot of small scraps in the colors I wanted to use. I'll include a list down below in the description for all of the materials, tools, substrate molds, and other goodies that I used in this video in case you'd like to create some mosaic leaves of your own. You can find this information if you're watching on your computer by clicking show more underneath the video description. And if you're watching on your phone or tablet, you can click the down arrow to the right of the video title. So now that we've talked about the substrates and tesserae for this project, it's time to get tiling. The adhesive I used on these leaves is Weld Bond. 
It's a great adhesive for a project like this where the substrate is flat and the tesserae are about the same thickness. But you could use adhesives such as silicone, thin set mortar, tile adhesive or mastic, and even epoxy sculpt. To cut the tesserae, I used wheeled glass nippers, a glass cutter for stained glass, and running pliers. These tools allowed me to make very specific cuts, and as you'll see, some of the tesserae are quite thin in between the veins. I've done a number of videos here on the channel all about how to use mosaic tools, and I'll include a link to the playlist down below in the description so you can check it out. So I got started by tiling the veins on each of the leaves. Now keep in mind that the simpler you tile the veins, the easier your tiling will be as you're filling in the background. As a test, I did tile one of the maple leaves with more complicated veining, and I was glad I only did one of them that way. <laughs> It was tedious once I got started tiling the background of the leaf, and I didn't like the look of so many smaller pieces of tesserae, but that's just personal preference. Remember, when you're working with a small substrate like these leaves, think simpler is better. I wanted the vein tesserae to be firmly dry before I started cutting and fitting in the background leaf tesserae on each of the substrates. I found that it made the tiling so much easier and quicker, especially when working with such little tesserae. However, you may not like that approach. You may want to tile the leaves and background color all at the same time, and that's okay, whatever works for you. So once the vein tesserae were dry, I got to work with tiling the background of the leaves. If a leaf was yellow, for example, then I used a mix of yellow tesserae, or a mix of oranges, or reds, or greens, whatever the case may be. In other words, I didn't just use one shade of a color on each of the leaves, I used a mix. Whenever possible, I tried to use just one piece of tessera in between the veins. However, the substrate of some of these substrates is actually a little curved. So in order to have tesserae that laid flat on the substrate, I had to cut some of the tessera into two pieces. It's no big deal, but something for you to keep in mind as you're tiling. I don't mind the grout line going through the tessera, especially with how small the grout line is to begin with. If you'd rather have just one uncut tessera in between each vein, then I would suggest using a cement-based adhesive or something like epoxy sculpt or tile adhesive that will set up nicely and allow you to avoid the curvature of the substrate. In other words, it will give the illusion that you're tiling on a flat surface, when in actuality, you're building up the adhesive underneath the tesserae. And as you can see, I'm just tiling the surface area of each substrate. You can certainly tile along the sides and even bottom of each substrate, but I wanted to keep the thin set mortar sides exposed on the final grouted mosaic. The white thin set mortar looks a lot like cement to me, and I like that raw feel. So I just continued with tiling of each of the substrates, and each leaf went very quickly. From time to time, I needed to use an electric grinder on some of the tesserae just to make sure there were no jagged edges. You can use a grinding stone to achieve the same result, and I've done a video here on the channel all about how to use a grinding stone or sanding stone in your mosaic work, and I'll include a link to that video down below in the description so you can check it out. Once the leaves are all tiled, 
I'll let them sit here and fully dry for at least 24 hours before I come back and grout. Okay, the leaves have been sitting here drying for a few days and they're ready to be grouted. Before I prep the substrates for grouting, I'm going to look over the tesserae to double check that there aren't any pointy or jagged pieces sticking out. If you do find one like what I have here, you could use a small metal file to smooth it down. As you're filing, you'll want to make sure that you are, in fact, only filing the tessera and not the substrate as well. And once all of those pointy tesserae are taken care of, it's time to prep the substrates for grouting. Now, because the substrates are made from thin set mortar, that means they're porous. So if I were to grout them as is, the grout would permanently stain the exposed sides. And I personally don't want that. So I'm going to use painter's tape to tape up the bottom and exposed sides because I only want the tile work to be grouted. If your leaves are super curvy or have lots of angles, then the tape may not stick as well. But when you get to that area while you're grouting, you can just press the tape up to the substrate to avoid the grout getting in there. For the grout, I'm actually using thin set mortar, but you can certainly use grout for this project if you have it. I'm only using thin set mortar because I have so much of it and I was going to use a gray grout anyways. I mixed up my thin set mortar and now I'll let it sit for a few minutes before I use it. I think the colors of the leaves will look nice with the gray thin set and it'll contrast nicely with the substrate color. If you aren't familiar with how to mix up thin set or grout for that matter, or maybe you're wondering, is my grout or thin set fortified or not? Or how do I tint or color it? I have done a number of videos here on the channel all about the subject, and I'll include a link to the playlist down below in the description so you can check it out. Okay, my thin set is ready and I can get started with grouting. I'm going to take it slow since these are so little and I don't want to risk knocking off a tessera. So instead of doing my usual grouting in a clockwise counterclockwise motion, I'm going to take it slower and actually push the grout into the grout line a little more gently. And I'll continue this slow grouting process with each of the leaves. I want to make sure that I not only get grout in the grout line all over each leaf, but also that I finish off the edge of the tile work nicely. This just means that I'll smooth over the thin set and make sure that everything is filled in and that there's a nice thin set edge going around each leaf. Now, even though I'm going slow, this is a pretty quick process since they're all so small. And once I'm done grouting, I'll let them sit here for a few minutes to dry and then I'll come back and clean them off. Okay, the leaves have been sitting here drying and they're ready to be cleaned off. If you're doing a bunch of leaves, you'll want to do them in a smaller batch since the grout does have a limited working window. So now I'll carefully remove the grout from each leaf by using a small paper towel. And I'll gently rub off the extra grout on the surface of the tesserae. As you can see, the painter's tape is still on and it will remain on until I'm done with the grouting. I don't want to rub too hard and remove any of the grout on the outside edge since that's a bit bigger of a grouted area in certain spots, but I also don't want to dislodge any tesserae either. And I'll continue this grout removal process with each leaf. 
Once I'm done, I'll go over each leaf one more time, making sure I have removed any last bits of thin set. And now I'm ready to carefully remove the painter's tape. The grout is still wet, so I'll need to be extra careful when pulling it off. If you'd rather wait until your grout is fully cured, you certainly can. and I'll go over them with an old paintbrush to remove any of the grout dust. These mosaic leaves make a great addition to your fall tablescape or special occasion dinners. They're easy to create from substrate to grouting and they make a real conversation starter when grouped together. You could even make a bunch of them and send one home with each of your guests. I'll include a list down below in the description for all the materials, tools, substrate molds, and extra goodies that I used in today's video in case you'd like to make some mosaic leaves of your own. Question of the day, let me know down in the comments if you make your own substrates to use in mosaic, and if so, what did you make and how? I would love to hear. Thank you so much for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up as it really does help my channel and subscribe if you haven't already. Click the bell notification so you never miss a single upload and let me know in the comments if there's something you'd like me to cover in a future video. I'll see you soon. Bye! Powered by Pumpkin Spice Latte. Good? I knocked over my coffee. Down below in the description. <laughs> I haven't had one in years and now all of a sudden this season and I'm like pumpkin crazy. I do love pumpkins. As you can tell from the videos on this channel, I do love pumpkins. Pumpkin everything. Smell, food, yeah. Except I'm not the biggest fan of pumpkin pie, which is so funny. But anyways, pumpkin spice latte. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So good. So good oh my goodness and away she goes done Aww. if you're looking for more mosaic inspiration you can check out one of these two videos until then see ya i'll see you soon bye